Hi, and thank you for watching. There are some interesting developments in the world, especially concerning the situation between Russia and Ukraine that have come to light that I would like to share with you today. I would also like to revisit a video from last year around this time, which may be very applicable to this year. I would also like to thank all those who have contributed to the Telegram group and for sharing information that they have found that has shed more light on what I will be sharing with you today. For those who have not joined yet, please use the link in the description below to join us on Telegram, where I do my best to post daily updates. As far as the war between Russia and Ukraine is concerned, in the last video I pointed out how the infographic show accurately predicted how the war between Russia and Ukraine would start, although different countries are mentioned in the onset. This image that they used on the thumbnail for their video does not only look like global nuclear war, but it also resembles another shape that we have become very familiar with over the past two years. And that is the shape of the phantom enemy that has gripped the world in fear, and which our enemy used to gain entry into God's faith harvest, so that he could lay claim on what does not legally belong to him yet. Based on what we read in Leviticus 23, the poor and the stranger only receive their portion once the owner gathered in what belongs to him, and not before that time. Please see how the following two passages should apply to when Jesus gathers in that which belongs to him. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest, neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger. I am the Lord your God. Another thing that the infographic show pointed out in their video from 2019 is how nations sharing a border with Russia would be accepted as full NATO members, and that this would then be the final straw that breaks the camel's back. Well, over the past few days it has come to light that Finland, who shares a substantial border with Russia, is considering becoming a NATO member, with 60% of Finland's population, apparently, supporting NATO membership during March of 2022. Now whether these numbers are real or not does not really matter because we already know where they are heading with this and what the outcome will be. It was all carefully planned out ahead of time and the media is simply providing a narrative to support planned events that are being carried out. The Finnish government is now preparing to present a NATO membership proposal to their parliament by mid-April and as usual this would seem to be part of the plan as presented in the predictive programming that those in the know enjoy putting out. On this Iron Maiden poster that Daniel Kumar shared with us, you will see several flags on it, many of them being members of NATO, but the flag right in front is the flag of Finland, and it points in a different direction, clearly distinguishing it from the others. There is also obviously a nuclear explosion in the background. Are those who know our enemy's plan showing us how they plan to break the camel's back by accepting another Russian neighbor into the NATO alliance. It is definitely something to keep an eye on in the days ahead, especially with how this proposal occurs during the time of the Lord's feasts, aligning of course with Passover in Israel. Then there is also the situation with Kaliningrad, a Russian territory that has now been isolated from Russia, and the Suwalki gap that separates this territory from Russia could perhaps be another instance in which a conflict could easily escalate. Then there are also other nations sharing borders with Russia that are now asking to become NATO members, including Kosovo and Bosnia, of which Bosnia was specifically mentioned in the video from the infographic show. So it would seem that the actions of Russia's neighbors will be used to provoke a situation in which a war could be triggered between Russia and NATO, and once again, it does not matter who will eventually be blamed for this, it is simply a plan that we have been told about as far back as 1871, and which is being carried out by those who do the enemy's bidding, 
and the information that is shared with the public is, in my opinion, simply there to provide a narrative that will make all of this seem less planned. I would next like to share with you a video that I did last year and should pass over pass us by uneventfully yet again. Please do not lose hope as there is another feast that we need to keep our eyes on as it is specifically associated with the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when he comes back to fetch those that are waiting for him. In the parable of the talents that I will look at in a little more detail in the next video, we will consider the description that the unprofitable servant gives of his master and how this is reflected in what many believers think of their Lord today, even though they may not be aware of it and may not have given this any thought yet. In this parable, however, there is another nugget that we will consider in this video. The master of the servants is said to have gone on a journey to a far land that took a long time, as we can see in the following two passages. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants, and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. After a long time the Lord of those servants cometh, and reckoneth with them. This is not the only parable in which a far journey is referenced. In the Gospel of Mark we have another passage that mentions a far journey that the master of the servants would take, as can be seen next. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. We also know that we are told in the word of God that everything that was written was given to us to obtain understanding and that God spread his message to us out over his entire word. Only when we consider everything that was written in God's word are we considered wise and can we obtain a complete understanding of this. And this is how God designed his word. Whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Now what is interesting about the long journey that the master of the servants took is that we have another reference to this from Proverbs, in which an adulteress seduces a young man, while the master of the house is away, and the young man fitting the shoes of the unprofitable servant that Jesus mentioned in the parables. Here is what the adulteress had to say. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home. He is gone a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him, and will come home at the day appointed. This passage fits in very well with the two parables that were given by Jesus. But in this one there is one additional aspect mentioned which may be inferred in the parables, but which is not specifically pointed out. That is, that the good man or the master will return on an appointed day. We know that appointed days refer to the Lord's feast days, and these are clearly defined for us in his word, or so most may think. There is actually one appointed day or feast of the Lord that is somewhat obscured, but which also forms part of our Heavenly Father's instructions to his people, and this instruction is given in Numbers chapter 9. Firstly, the Lord instructs Moses to keep the Passover at its appointed time. This instruction is not only given in this passage, but several times throughout the books of Moses. However, in the ninth chapter of Numbers, there is an interesting situation that occurs for which Moses goes to God to ask him for his instructions. Please consider the passage that is given in this regard. And there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man, that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day, and those men said unto him, We are defiled by the dead body of a man. Wherefore are we kept back, that we may not offer an offering of the Lord in his appointing season among the children of Israel? And Moses said unto them, Stand still, and I will hear what the Lord will command concerning you. As you can see, certain men had to deal with a dead body at the time of Passover, 
which in itself would point to the situation in which Jesus died for the sins of the world during this feast of the Lord. So as these people were defiled by a dead body and could not keep Passover, they asked Moses what they should do, and Moses in turn asked the Lord for his instructions. Now notice our Heavenly Father's response to this question, and consider an additional condition that our Heavenly Father adds to his instruction, which those who inquire did not ask about. This is very important to take note of, because this is something that receives a lot of attention in the New Testament, when Jesus speaks to his people in parables, and something that would seem to connect this hidden feast to his return. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you, or of your posterity, shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, or be in a journey afar off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. The fourteenth day of the second month at even, they shall keep it, and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Those who were defiled did not ask Moses what to do in a situation where a person had been on a long journey to a far country. So why would our Heavenly Father add this condition to keeping Passover at a later time? Think about that for a minute. We know from the parables that Jesus shared, and the description we have in Proverbs, that this is pointing to Jesus who is the good man who will return from a far country while he was on a long journey, and from Proverbs we are told that this will happen on an appointed day, or a feast day. Could it be that this instructions in Numbers 9 is showing us the appointed time on which the bridegroom will arrive? The fourteenth day of the second month occurs on a full moon, one month after Passover is kept. This is also three days before a date given to us in Genesis when God caused the rain to be on the earth for forty days and forty nights. If you watched my previous four videos, you will remember the repeating patterns that we discussed that involves three days of darkness that is followed by forty days of rain being poured out over the world, which will prepare the next portion of God's harvest for receiving a second fulfillment of Pentecost. I am just amazed at how our Heavenly Father is able to use a repeating pattern in so many instances, and that a somewhat hidden feast of the Lord would fit in perfectly with the timeline shown to us in what happened when Jesus was crucified, buried for three days, followed by forty days of preparing believers to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This matches the same pattern of Jonah who spent three days in the belly of the fish, and then proclaimed forty days over Nineveh, before judgment would start if they failed to repent. The same pattern could once again be repeated on this upcoming instance of second Passover, given the situation that the world finds itself in. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. And the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And it will also fit in with the parable of the ten virgins, in which Jesus tells us that the bridegroom tarried. And we already know from the other parables the reason why he tarried. He was on a long journey, which would then invoke the instructions given in Numbers chapter 9. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. The fact that the bridegroom tarried and that he did not arrive at the expected time would then fit in with the understanding that he would have had to wait another month to keep Passover because of the journey that he was on. This could mean then that the virgins expected his arrival on Passover. But since he was on a long journey to a far country, the appointed time for Passover in this situation would be one month later on the 14th day of the second month. And this is why we are told that the bridegroom tarried. This understanding would seem to become very clear when we combine what is written in the parables with Numbers chapter 9 and Proverbs chapter 7, and points to the appointed day on which the good man returns from a far journey that took a long time. As we are not sure which one of the many calendars applies, second Passover could occur during a window of time between April 29th and May 16th in 2022. But what is really very interesting is that we have a very important and unique heavenly marker occurring on May 16th, which would seem to divide two dispensations. Now, as I have stated earlier, there are also patterns of three days followed by 40 days that are associated with Passover. 
and May 16th could mark either the end or the beginning of this pattern. And there's also the possibility that it does not apply at all. What I can say is that from what I can see, our blessed hope is just around the corner, and it could happen any day between now and May 16th, and that there is a very good possibility for our Heavenly Father to catch away His Son's bride between now and May 16th. So if you are tired of waiting and perhaps feel like the Lord has forgotten you in a world that you can no longer call your home, please be encouraged by what our brother in Christ, Ken Peters, who has already preceded us to be with the Lord, shared back in 2019. God bless. The Lord says to my people here at Jubilee, I love you with an everlasting love. I want you to know I have not forgotten you. I have not forgotten my promises to you. Do you not know that where the word of the king is, there is power? My power to accomplish for you has not diminished, nor have I become slack concerning my promise to each of you. You have all been through the time of preparation. A quite lengthy time to make you ready. Just as the children of Israel were made ready in Egypt, just as Joshua readied the people for three days before crossing the Jordan, just as the church was made ready in the upper room, so have I been preparing you, Jubilee. For certainly a work, an outpouring, a movement of my grace, power, and spirit is now ready to come upon each of you. A true New Times, New Testament Passover deliverance is coming upon each of you. You each shall experience as Israel did. You each shall overcome your enemies as Israel did. You each shall plunder this world's economic system as Israel did. You each shall receive strength and wholeness where you were once feeble as Israel did. You shall accept my wonder-working power as Israel did. I have not forgotten you. I have not forgot your labor of love. Jubilee, receive this day new hope. Jubilee, receive this day great expectation. Jubilee, receive this day all I have promised for you. To the shepherd of Jubilee, I say, my son, this is the day of my reckoning. This is the day of my proving. This is the day of my honoring. For your adversary has smitten, pressed, lied, stolen, and divided. But none of his schemes have moved you, my son. None of his relentless oppression has swayed your heart from me. You have run well, my son. You have endured all, my son. You have loved and worshipped me while being beaten down, shackled, and hindered. But I say, today, I have come as the Ancient of Days to judge and execute my will on your behalf. The Lord says, Shepherd, I am here on your behalf. Ask of me, and I'll give you the nations. Ask of me, I will cause you to be my great agent of unity. Ask of me, I will use you as my great emancipator. As those tried in the furnace, where even the fires of testing were increased seven times, 
So were you, my son, yet without complaint, yet without murmuring, even without losing hope in my plans and my purposes. For my great grace was upon you. My shepherd, this is your greatest hour and greatest time of servanthood for me. You have stood when you were exhausted. You have stayed when leaving would have been easier. You have not forsaken your call when others did, and you have not failed in character when the famous did. In all of this, my son, you have proven to hell more than being a servant, more than being a shepherd, more than being a prophet to your time, You have proven to hell by being my son, my son. The glories, the beauty, the honor of my kingdom. The glories, the beauty, the honor of my kingdom will now be bestowed upon you and this house. Fear not, you jubilee shall not be as others who had this promise, who after upon receiving it, self-destructed, being sabotaged by pride, arrogance, and self-inflation. I will protect you, says the Lord. I will protect you. For you have been through that which humbles my children. For you have been through that which crushes my children, that which brings forth the true wine of the fruit. So stand and walk into what my angelic hosts are bringing. Accept what my spirit blows upon this place And this coastline. For this is that visitation. This is that habitation. That all the years you have prayed and longed for. Says your Lord and King.